Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. We're pleased to be joined by former Florida Secretary of State Sandra Mortham. Ms. Mortham has the distinction of being the first woman elected as Republican leader in the Florida House of Representatives, the first Republican woman to win a Florida cabinet post, and the first person to be twice named as Florida Statesman of the Year. Ms. Mortham is also the founder of Maggie's List, a federal political action committee created to raise awareness and funds to increase the number of conservative women elected to federal public office. And Sandy, thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Well, first off, I should congratulate you because candidates endorsed by Maggie's List won 19 or 20 seats in the House and Senate on November 8th. So congrats to Maggie's List. Thank you. Thank you. We were thrilled with our candidates, and uh, now we're looking to the next cycle already. Yeah, I have some questions uh, for you about that. But real quickly, though, you founded Maggie's List back in 2010. Can you talk to us about why and the impact that you're having today? Well, we um, had a group of us that got together and said that uh, Emily's List had done a phenomenal job with um, left-leaning women for 35 years, and it's high time that we tried to do the same thing for fiscal conservative women. And so that uh, was sort of the impetus for getting this started. And I think that, um, you know, we're going to see great things from Maggie's List. Now, success stories. Your organization has had quite a few. Who are the more high-profile names in Congress that Maggie's List has helped? And can you identify for us the top five women to watch in Congress? Well, I think that you're going to see Deb Fisher, who was just elected for U.S. Senate, uh, to be just a phenomenal member. Um, I met her back about a year ago in Washington at a Maggie's List event, and uh, she came and she was trying to convince us as to why we should endorse her, and uh, we did. We were the first actual federal PAC that did endorse her, in a race, and she had uh, she had some formidable uh, Republican opposition, and just really, she was fantastic. She's a star, and I think she'll really do well in in um, the U.S. Senate. Now, and then we had uh, Jackie Walorski in Indiana, as well as uh, Susan Brooks. And Jackie, of course, uh, ran two years ago. She did not win. But she had the courage to come back and, and run again. And, and I think those are important stories, are women that um, may not win the first time out, but they come back and they realize this is something that they really feel that they need to do for their country and uh, do a phenomenal job. And I think that those are go both going to be stars, as well as Ann Wagner in Missouri. Uh, she won her race, and I think she's going to be a, a wonderful member. Now, in the wake of losses of the White House and the Senate, Republicans are looking toward 2014 and 2016. What role will Maggie's List play moving forward? Well, we're going to be watching uh, diligently and recruiting and hopefully uh, able to train some women to step forward. Uh, I think you're already seeing people like uh, Congresswoman Capito uh, putting her hat in the ring, and uh, I would venture to say she may be one of our first endorsed candidates for the next cycle. I think she would have an excellent chance of winning that West Virginia U.S. Senate seat. Now, do you see even more women elected to federal public office moving forward, and if so, why? I do, and um, this last cycle, it was a tough cycle for fiscally conservative women, um, but um, I think that you're going to see, and I'm hoping that we're going to see Republicans uh, being willing to look at women because certainly Democrat women did extremely well this last cycle. And there's absolutely no reason uh, that we shouldn't have um, equal or even better success because these are women that are you know, talking about less government, more personal responsibility, uh, fiscal conservatism. And I think that that rings very true um, with the American public. All right, let's talk about 2012 real quickly and the role that women voters are playing. And this last election, they made up half of the electorate. And for the first time since 1952, a presidential candidate who men chose, Mitt Romney, decisively lost. You know, this tells us a lot about the influence that women voters have in elections. What must Republicans do to win over this very influential voting bloc? 
Well, I mean, we have known for years since 2008 that 54% of the actual electorate are women, and yet um, I don't believe that we have the the conservatives have done a real good job in understanding that, and they've got to wake up and smell the roses. Uh, if they don't, we will continue to to not do as well as we should do. And I, I honestly believe that with the with the right candidates, we can win these races. Uh, you know, it was very unfortunate. I had some personal favorites with um, women running like Mia Love. Mm-hmm. Um, phenomenal candidate in Utah, but, but lost just by uh, very slim margins. Um, Martha Zoller in, in Georgia um, lost, in a, lost early, but uh, a great candidate. And I think she's going to... I think she'll run again, and, and Martha McSally. I mean, we had to go a week almost uh, to actually find out who was going to win that race. But, again, I think that uh, we've got to rethink, um, as conservatives, uh, how to win these races, and I think women can do it. Yeah, I mean, does the GOP need to change its tone, though, uh, to combat this war on women narrative perpetuated by the left? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and we can't have, you know, unfortunately, we cannot have candidates out uh, making statements that are just inflammatory. And that and, and it and it works against us across the board when that happens. So we've got to, you know, we've got to be mindful of um, the very important group of people that are electing our leaders and they are women. Last question for you, Sandy. Earlier this year, you said you'd be elated if there were a woman, perhaps Condoleezza Rice, on the ticket with Mitt Romney. Could we see a woman on the GOP ticket in 2016, and who would be the most likely person? That's a very difficult question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would have liked to to have seen uh, Condoleezza Rice, and I think it would have made it a very, very exciting race. Um, with that being said, I think that there are opportunities. We've got some U.S. senators um, that are real comers. Um, when you look at Kelly Iote, um and others, I think that um, we we have some we have some good opportunities. Kelly was one of our Maggie's List uh, endorsed candidates our very first cycle, and she's done. Um, Uh, I think, a phenomenal job, but there are others, and um, I'm not ready to pick and choose, uh, but why not? (laughs) I mean, these are very qualified people that have uh, put themselves out there for elected office, and um, I think that women deserve to have someone on the ticket at that level or even as the candidate for president. All right, well, if folks want to learn more about Maggie's List, where can they go? They can go to uh, the, the website, which is www.maggieslist.org, and they can uh, join and, and get our newsletters, and I hope that they'll do that because uh, the only way that we are going to get our message out is to make sure that we have as many conservatives, men and women, um, following Maggie's List and what we're trying to accomplish. All right. Sandra Mortham, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.